is joining us from IT.com. Uh, not only is IT such a fabulous sponsor of this event, but what a team player. Joe has shortened his presentation to 30 minutes so that we can catch up on time. So uh, Joe's always interesting to listen to. I'm going to discuss why domains matter and how to succeed online. Is this mic OK? Ooh, that's loud. Hey, everybody. I thank you guys for being here, OK? You are now looking at a person who has been excited about domain names for about 20 years and remains just as excited as the day I began. And in fact, it's kind of come full circle because my first job in the domain name world was working for Central Nick as a registry and a company who actually sold uh, their uh, very valuable US.com subdomains. And uh, I've gone full circle. I've worked for a registrar, 101 domain, and now I'm back with another registry. And um, just, just loving it, and I'm loving the opportunities that we can offer. So this audience, this show, is what I call a mashup. So we have people here from the mobile messaging world. We have people here that are domain brokers. We have registries. We have registrars. We have new people that are coming that, you know, they're just like, what's going on with domain names? You know, and uh, they want to understand how to invest in domain names, how to buy them, where to buy them. The truth there is, is that there's a lot to learn. And so that's what my presentation is going to be geared towards, is uh, people that want to learn how to succeed online. Is this too loud? Is this OK? OK. So and why domain names matter? Uh, they really do matter if you're trying to send a message. They make a big difference in your success long term. So let's just kind of go through some of these slides. Um, we have something that, that our people have been doing at various domain-related shows called the Domain Name Game. So in the last uh, 12 years or so, we've added uh, about 1,482 new top-level domains to, the, to the, what's called the, the IANA uh, root zone. Okay, 1,482, give or take. Um, and when we play that game, we ask them, what is the real new top-level domain? And the truth is, most of us fail. I think in, in about six months of playing this game at various shows, including ICANN, including this show, including the, uh, the show in CloudFest, we, I, we might have had one or two real winners. How many winners have we had, Natalia? Do you remember? <laughs> Very few people, even in the industry. So the question I always like to ask is, you know, we, we came out with new top-level domains in the, in, in the interest of improving the DNS. And for those that are new here, the DNS is the domain name system. We wanted to improve it. But all improvements don't necessarily turn into real improvements. And I like to look back, you know, on just various examples. I mean, how do you change a wheel to make it better? Well, there are things you can do to make it better, but you don't really want to change the shape too much, right? Um, mobile phones. How do you make a mobile phone better? We've actually made them better. I was in the mobile phone business for about 10 years during the 90s. And uh, I remember I, had, I was really interested in CRMs and contact managers and personal information managers. But I remember thinking, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to bother with a personal information manager until it could be put into a mobile phone. And in those days, it wasn't in a mobile phone. Obviously, today, they've gone way beyond that. They've improved it, but many basics are still the same. Well, I think there's kind of a lot of BS in the domain name world today, OK? So I had to put up my little uh, famous emoji there because there's too many choices. Every day, I face the paralysis of analysis, right? I'm always trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. What should I do? What tools should I use? And it, it, I mean, we're faced with too many choices, and that's why people get frustrated. So I want to kind of talk about that in the context of domain names and improving the DNS. Now, the guy you see on the screen is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Bo John Postel, who passed away many years ago. But he's credited with being the father of the DNS. And he wrote the original RFC 900 and whatever it was, 20. And it, I think it's important to 
remind people of what it says. This is the invention of the domain name system. It said that it's a tree structured global domain space that has a few top level domains. The top level domains are subdivided into second level domains and the second level domains may be subdivided into third level domains and so on. It's a hierarchical system that was designed to be very simple. And it was genius. That was in 1984. So what did they do before that? They kept, they kept IP addresses on index cards. Well, when they advanced a little, they put them into a computer system. There was a Unix uh, computer system, and they would just keep track of them in that very simple flat file database. And then they came out with .com, .gov, .net. There were a few top-level domains, all useful in their own ways. And where have we come today? Okay, today in 2020, we have 1,482, give or take, top-level domains. And it's quite hard to keep track of all of them because who can remember them all? I'm not saying it was a bad idea. That'd be hypocritical because I was part of, you know, I think our company in 2012 applied, helped about 12 applicants apply for new top-level domains. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, not going to be too critical, but the point is, was it a good idea? Well, .com is very simple. Now, I, I love telling the story about in 2004 when there was a presidential election in the United States and George Bush was running against, uh, I don't even know who it was, but Cheney was his vice president or his running mate. And what happened is somebody asked him about a particular controversial issue. And I know a lot of you people that are old timers in the domain name business know this story. Um, he said to the audience, hey, go to factcheck.com and you'll see that what these people are saying about you know, George Bush is not true. And where did they end up? They ended up at this web page that was a book written by George Soros, and it talked about why we should not reelect uh, Vice President Cheney's running mate. How did that happen? Well, it happened, oh, did I just turn this off? It happened because it was factcheck.org. Now, I'm, my point I'm making here is that people and I'm not talking about people in this room, I'm talking about the world, is very much in tune with dot-com domains. And this is no less true today than it was in 2004. It's still true. The world is learning about new top-level domains, but the truth is they still are very aligned. Um, there's a mental footprint out there that has been built over the years with dot-com domains. Now I want to unpack an article, this was just uh, about a month ago, um, about a company that has the domain name threads.com. Now we all know that Meta came out with threads or threads.net. Well look at what happened here. As, an, as a uh, result of Facebook using threads.net, this company had traffic increase by 12,148% in a month, okay? They went from, the, I mean, it, it's crazy. 10% of their 90 million visits in July went to this Slack competitor, threads.com. 2.5 million visits arrived on July 6th and boosted its ranking from 545,000 to 5,813. It's, it's crazy what's happened. I believe a big part of that is because people think about .com. They went to threads.com instead of threads.net. So how did .com become a brand? Okay. Well, it happened because of the advertising dollars that have been spent over 30, 40 years by the top advertisers in the world, and not just in the United States, but globally. Now, back in 2012, I did a little study, and I found actually uh, very good resources for the amount of money that was spent. And I estimated that about $3 trillion was spent from the mid-80s all the way till 2012. That, that amount is probably doubled. There's no one top-level domain that has that kind of money. Like if I started dot .joe, okay, I will never ever achieve the amount of advertising spend that this aggregate group of advertisers, Verizon, GM, 
you know, BMW, all these companies around the world are advertising, and what do they put at the bottom of their website, or what do they put at the bottom of their billboard, or the newspaper ad, or the TV ad? What do they put there? They put .com. So I'm, I'm kind of talking about this because I want to point out that there is an outsized benefit to it. Now, I'm not saying that country codes aren't important. I'm not saying that new TLDs aren't important. I'm just saying that there's a large population around the world that is very attuned to .com, and we don't change that because we want to. We, it's just something that happened, and it's still there today. If we don't face that fact, we are risking not, we are risking our success online, in my opinion. And so that brings, oh, and I, I just want to point out, you know, something that's happened over the years. It used to be that dot-com domains were sort of a directory. We've lost that. Now Amazon is sort of the uh, place you go shopping. Uh, it used to be that Amazon was a little nervous about dot, diapers.com, and what did they do? They bought them, okay? They spent $545 million and they bought them. Uh, in, eventually, they came out with their own line of diapers, okay? Uh, they built up the site, made it look better. Where is it today? Well, at some point, he decided to shut it down, and if you go there today, it doesn't resolve anymore, okay? So they basically wanted to put that competitor out of business. Why? Because they had an amazing domain of a very useful staple product that moms need every single day, and that was an advantage. It was a competitive advantage. When you think a lot about a lot of the early retail companies that Amazon may have put out of business today, they started with great domain names. And anyway, this has happened in all realms. Uh, Amazon is the e-commerce place today. Netflix and YouTube are entertainment places. Google, Yahoo, and Outlook are communications. Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram are the social networks. And we use Google and Bing and some of the other ones in different countries for our search today. So after all of that, I want to point out to you that there are ways to get rid of all this BS, OK? And I think that um, if I like to use this as my measurement, OK? I've been around the internet a long time. I've seen lots of people succeed. I've seen lots of people not. And if my mom were alive, and if she said, Joe, what do I do? I want to start a website. I want to start a business. I want to market online. What would I do? What advice would I give to my mom, okay? And I want to talk about some of those things. So we put together a little graph. I want you to think about your market. Whatever it is that you offer, whatever idea you're trying to put out there, there's an audience out there somewhere. And your job is to tune yourself and your messaging to that market, okay? So think of this as your market. It, it has a wavelength, it has a way of uh, operating, a way of thinking, okay, just like a wavelength. Now when you enter, think of your product as the red. The green is your market, the red is you, all right? You're not going to get it right the first time. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to go in big, you're going to go in small. It, you're not going to be aligned because you're just, you just don't know really what people are actually thinking. It requires a lot of research and, and experimentation. But over time, you can get closer, and at some point, you want to be aligned, all right? To me, a .com domain helps you to achieve that. And by the way, you know I work for IT.com. I don't work for VeriSign. You guys recognize that. But I believe that the IT.com domain, okay, is very important as a tool. It's not the only tool. There are a lot of other tools, but I think it's a way for you to get a premium domain at a standard price, okay? And so that's why I'm talking about this. Now, let's talk about another angle. You know, not just the .com or whatever, but your domain name, but let's talk about the value of a great domain. And the RA stands for the right audience. Think of your probability for success. If you're starting out, you have a message you want to put forth, an idea or an objective. If you have the right audience, you increase the probability of your success. The next part is the right message. Is your message aligned with how people think? If you can tune your message and get it right, you increase your chance of success. The third part is the right time, okay? If I just bought a house and a realtor comes knocking at my door, he's not there at the right time. I've just bought my house. If I just bought a car and uh, you know some salesman from a car dealership calls me, it's not the right time, okay? 
The last element, though, is sort of what I call the X factor, and it is your domain name. It's a memorable, memorable domain name, and it compounds the effect of your uh, messaging because if you have a name that people can remember a year later, you eliminate the problem of the time. I mean, I might buy a car now, and I might not want to hear from a car salesman now, but if I can remember that your domain name is you know, cars.com or maybe cars.it.com or even, even a new TLD that's memorable, it could be, you know, buy.cars. I don't care. The point is, is it memorable? If it's memorable, okay, then your probability of success goes up tenfold because a year later or two years later or three years later, they, they'll remember you. So the domain name matters. Um, this is a little chart I put together. I, I just call it Veritoma. And I, I would say the key to su succeeding online is just doing the work, okay? You have, there is work to do. All of us have work to do if we're gonna succeed. I remember when Munir first told me about domain days and he just was thinking about the domain. He wanted a great domain and he, actually I know he spent extra money to get that domain. Is that right? You didn't go and look for something for $10. You bought a premium domain in the aftermarket, okay? A .com domain. Vera stands voice, expert, resource, and authority. And the idea is, You've, you need to become that place where people go to find information on the ideas that they're interested in. And so I use the example of a real estate agent, agent and I, I like to point out, you know, as people are considering property, they're searching for a home, their interest is high, okay? Um, at once they buy their home, their interest goes down, okay? Then they think about other things, furniture and so forth and so on. If you're sending messages to these people, maybe messaging service, you don't want to do it after they bought their house. You want to do it while they're researching a home, okay? And the same is true for email. You don't want to send people messages that are not interested. If they say stop, you should stop, okay? Toma is top of mind awareness. And the only way you achieve that is you talk to them. You, 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 you communicate them with them when they're interested. Um, if you can remember those things and how to use them, that'll help you to succeed online. The other thing is, another example I use is a business model. Let's say you're a wholesale manufacturer's representative. Well, in this situation, if your customer is retail stores, you don't have to worry about them never not being interested. You can message them on a, a regular basis and not worry about their interest. So you still have to be that resource, that authority. You have to be that, you know, that expert um, but you don't have to worry as much about the timing. And so the, the way to succeed is just straight, okay? If you're a river, you want, you'll, you'll move a lot faster. You need to make it so easy for your client to remember you, to understand what you do, to understand who you are, to understand that you're the best person or best company to get the, the product you offer or the idea that you are promoting. Um, you do that by keeping it straight not meandering. I like to talk about SEO because everybody talks about SEO, but the truth is I don't think there are too many secrets. I've only heard one idea in SEO that I think is a secret, and I'll tell it to you in a little bit, but the, the, uh, to me it stands for search engine obviousness, okay? Basically, take the time to write good, good information. Okay, build content that matters. I guess you can use AI nowadays, but don't just you know depend on it. Make sure that it's something that people are interested. In. It's something that um, you know that your customer will care about. Be be that resource. You do that with with good articles and such. We we're, we're doing that stuff every day. Natalia um, and other people that work with us are working on that every single day. Um, but. It's not, it's, not that, it's not a secret. The only secret I've ever heard about search, and I'll share it to you because, you know, it wasn't, it, no, the guy that told me this is a great search engine optimizer. He does a great job, but <clears throat> he didn't tell me I couldn't tell anyone. And what it is, you know, part of search engine optimization, right, is bringing in quality links, right? High quality links that are not uh, artificial, okay? What this guy does for his clients is he encourages them, and it's not free, by the way, he encourages them to do scholarships, okay? Why a scholarship? How will that matter? 
Well, every student in the world is looking for, if they're really interested in what they're doing, they're looking for money to pay for their school. And a lot of the colleges and a lot of the educational institutions will have a directory of scholarships that are out there. What better way to get .edu or even .gov links inbound to your website than by offering a small scholarship? In actuality, my brother did this. He has an insurance agency. It's a small one, but it's a, he's very successful. And probably many years ago, I told him to do this. You wouldn't believe the amount of traffic he gets and the amount of, uh, really, inquiries he gets because of his SEO. And that's just that one little secret I gave him. And then, I think finally here, I want to point out that your domain name should be the star. That's the center, okay? There's a lot of ways to reach customers. We, you can reach them through, through social networks and Facebook and Instagram and uh, threads, I guess, and uh, all of these social, uh, uh, X, I guess would be, I would have to say now. Build off ramps, okay? Your, your domain name is the center and you need to build a way for people, use the social networks to build your tribe, build an off ramp and get their email, get their mobile number and use that because then it's your customer. It's not Facebook's customer or Instagram's customer or LinkedIn's customer. You need to own the customer. And email is not dead and neither is short messaging services. Although I think short messaging services probably got more potential in today's world than email does. But email is not dead. Don't ever believe that. But you, you, you just need to capture those clients. Make them yours. And keep your domain at the center so that you reinforce where they need to go to get the information they want to reach you. So, if anybody has questions or wants to discuss this, I, I, I'm open to that. I'd love to share, but, uh, and I'd like to get your input. But um, to me, that's the way to succeed online. It's not that complicated, and there's just too many choices out there, and we get confused, and we don't know what to do because we're like, just, we get paralyzed because of all these choices. Um, I want to stop before, unless anybody has questions. Does anybody have any questions or want to discuss anything? I just want to uh, put a plug in for, I know they mentioned it earlier this morning, but I think it's really important um, to mention it again and to keep reinforcing this, and that's the Internet Commerce Association. Uh, we became a member last year. Um, the Internet Commerce Association does great work for people who own great domain names and for people who want to build businesses in the domain name industry. They deserve our support. They're the only group, it's not ICANN, uh, it's not even I2C, although that's an important organization, but the Internet Commerce Association is dedicated solely to protecting registrant rights. So I wanted to encourage you to visit their website. Go to internetcommerce.org or internetcommerce.com. Is it org? Okay. And look at what they do. There's a lot of people uh, from big companies and small companies who are members of the ICA. I would encourage you to become a member. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe.